led the Afrikaners to victory in 1948 and instituted the policy of apartheid. We chat to the author about the depth of the man and why this perspective. Lindy, good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Before we get into how long it took you to write the book and the kind of materials you had to, to archive, there's something interesting. Milan was asked on his deathbed about the most important service he had rendered during his political career. He answered that I could serve my nation, that I could unite my people. It's probably a perspective nobody's ever thought of. No, and it's the supreme irony of Milan. I think when he was on his deathbed, he believed that he had achieved his life's mission. Um, he had no idea of the way we would remember him today. And mm. it's this interesting dichotomy between what he thought he had achieved and, and what legacy. we feel today. Yes. Yeah. And it's that, and it, and it brings me to this particular point, because you spent 10 years, I mean, this idea was formed 10 years ago, and oh, the last decade, you've put this puzzle together, not only of the Afrikaner history, in terms of its political history, um, you spend time putting together D.F. Milan in a construct, mm -hmm. but then you also found the elements of humanity that we maybe never thought of, because we do have a disassociated mm -hmm. um, relationship with apartheid. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. I think, in a way, it makes us more comfortable to you know, to realize, okay, we were dehumanized during apartheid, um, and now in return you dehumanize those who instituted it. And it's a far more uncomfortable truth to stare this humanity in the face mm. um, and to look at this character and say, well, on the one hand, there's tragedy. He lost his wife after three and a half years, and he was left with two little boys who he had to raise by himself, and no idea how to look after them. There's, there's this personal tragedy, and then at the same time, this person with a legacy that... Uh, mm in a way pushes us away uh, mm. from the humanity at the same time. Uh, it is interesting for me because, you know, what? my first thought was when I picked up the book, why on D.F. Milan? But then I do realize that whether you like it or not, it is an actual part of the fabric of our mm. history. It's true. It's, uh, you know, I, th I think the reason behind the book as well is to add to the narrative, you know, to add to the complexity. Um, this is, in a way, also we, we want to understand the motivations. Um, sometimes also the banality uh, mm. of our past. Um, so for that reason, I think in order to have a more, uh, one would say, not a complete story, but a more comprehensive story, this also needs to be added to our history. You had access to these, uh, the one remaining son. Mm. What was the interesting thing that you didn't know about D.F. Milan when you put this book together? And you went like, wow, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, I think, in a way, the, the, the humane aspects. Um, I think the most interesting thing about D.F. Milan actually lies in the theology, because there's this very, there's this um, image of him as this very strict Germany, you know, very mm. fundamentalist. And when you start digging into his theology, you realize he was actually quite open-minded. Um, he had no issues with Darwin's theory of evolution, for mm. example. Uh, within the church, he was actually considered a more liberal thinker. <laughs> and that's part of what drew me to him in the first place, because I thought, well, this is something that doesn't link up with the stereotype. In 30 seconds, you not only gave us a perspective of Dev Milan, but you gave us the rise of the Afrikaner nationalism. Why that context? Why give us the, com not the complete picture, but why in the context of Dev Milan, mm. give us the backdrop to the, to the, mm. the politics as well? Well, it's interesting because, because he was at the forefront of the Afrikaner nationalist movement. His story is the story of the rise of Afrikaner nationalism and vice versa. You can't separate the, the two. two. Um, and that's why we need to read about him today. We're going to leave it there, but I do recommend it. It is an absolute uh, fascinating read. Author Lindy Kurtz with her autobiographical look at D.F. Milan the ri and the rise of the Afrikaner nationalism. It is a compelling read, not only for history buffs, as I mentioned at the beginning, but I think it is a compelling read just for anybody who's interested in the history of how we created and uh, landscaped our country to where it is today, 20 years into our democracy. Anyway, we take an outbreak. We'll back up to this. Mm -hmm.